toca al Bolívar precisamente en el valor que tiene que tener de acuerdo a su capacidad económica de producción de nuestro país. Que no lo sobrevalora. You don't need to value over the top. Looking for a tendency of value in real economy. Denoting a pop of what this country should do should be economically and the currency this country should have in the future due to its capacity. That's an economist concept that should be debated, underst understood, and also should be used to strengthen it with looking to the future, visualizing it in the next 20 or 30 years. We're resilient of a phase creating what still persists in Venezuela for a long time, I think, modestly, in the scheme of war economy, which is a multi-currency system. Nobody should be ashamed because I've seen some partners of the left that are ashamed sometimes. It was a historical necessity in a moment of economic crisis. And more than a necessity, it was a successful answer so that Venezuela could endure the ta those difficult times and its recovery, a stabilization of its economy and the emergence of a new economical model. So it's a very important element. The public banking, private banking, Central Bank of Venezuela as the most important authority of the country has the responsibility of this system to continue to be strong and endure any crisis and get stronger from now on. And when I can, what I can say as president and the biggest authority is that you can count with my support to keep drawing and building and strengthening the currency system that Venezuela has created. That is going to be the one that is going to transcend in the years that are coming. We will never come, go back to the Cadiz. Never. Never going back. Ever. Look into the future. that allowed us to uh, get over this crisis. Because for a producer, it is important the price of, its, of his product. Inflation came as a phenomenon of this inflation disease called for you as Holland's economy disease. It was a Venezuelan disease for decades of the old economical model that we had overrating the currency, lack of production. We were not only importing inflation, but several schemes were generating so that inflation keep existing as a reality in our economy that could not be controlled. Imagine yourselves an economy 
that cannot receive 99% of its incomes. What could happen with this change of currency? Inflation is reflexes like someone suffering from hypertension and starts eating reason not never eats the pills, have the pills. He doesn't have money and eats a lot. What can you expect? Blood pressure of 200. What could uh, we expect? What happened in 2019? I talk everybody with people calling me from abroad. I never, most of the times, reveal who I talk to. And I explain this phenomena. In the visits I've done lately, I explain this phenomenon to presidents that should not be aware of these details of the Venezuelan situation. And I tell them, we in 2019 marked an annual inflation of 344,000%. February 2019, the year of parallel power, parallel president, prosecution, parallel, central bank parallel. We had a central bank in New York. The year of parallel power that was the worst year in any sense. That year, due to the crisis caused by the sanctions. A million people emigrated from Venezuela. A million people. In all of these years, those people migrated due to economical obligations. This is what is called a liberation for pressures that Venezuela had internally in all these years. It has been said that 2,500,000 Venezuelans uh, migrated. came back, returned to get their lives back. It was an economic war. And I hope that with the entire recovery uh, and the advance of the real economical growth and the achievement of the first elements of economic prosperity in upcoming years, that wound healed and everybody who wants to come back can return to this homeland, beautiful homeland that is Venezuela. It's going to be this way, you will see. 344,000 percent. Prices increased two or three times. I read that after Second World War in Germany, they had a similar process. We studied this process during the morning with teams of financial assessment and good advisors of uh, young economical advisors, mornings and nights uh, comparing models and looking for options to analyze the actions that lead, led us to establish a new system as the base to boost the economy and to start overcome this hyperinflation. You know the processes already. Venezuela has achieved establishing a sustained growth of its real economy, of the GDP 
up 13 13 quarters we have achieved 13 quarters of growth in our economy the economical growth of this year is reflect positively there are good expectations economically in society in population in the economical factors there is economic optimism as we see it and feel it for the businesses that have been carrying out the goals that have been achieved there is a sustained growth in a economy the central bank of venezuela has announced its official communicate that establish a stable growth of 8.558 in our GPD in the economy that produce goods and services. We're not talking about we're uh, growing of uh, a growth of the papers. We're not talking as before of knowing the volume of oil exported that is growing and is going to grow even more. We're not talking about oil of a hundred and hundred and twenty with three million barrels. And when the central bank says, uh, I learned all this from Chavez debating with the ministers. When the central bank measured volume of oil at price, the economical growth was several tons of and something was exported. And this year we produced more oil, sell it uh, more expensive and the real economy the economy that produces potato milk rice shoes clothes the economy that produces houses buildings roads what about that economy today we can say that that concerned I saw in some faces that equation, we're solving it through practical work. There are a lot of things that lacked still to do, but what's important today, we know what we have to do, and we're doing it, and nothing's going to stop us to keep building a new economic model in the future. Growth, look as how the quarter was, which shows a tendency, as said to the president of the central bank, that estimations of the central bank, which are good for the annual, annual growth. So Paul said that we're going to growth by 5%. We're going to uh, get over them this year. And the monetary fund said we are going to go 4%, which is good. Who said it's bad? I said it's good. But what I said to the monetary fund on the CEPL is that it's going to be even better. And I told to the president of the central bank in the ear. I whispered to him that it's, I believe it's going to be even more. They are estimating a growth in the economy of, by 2024 of even of some 8%. The magical number of the economy this year is eight. I think it's going to be even more. But look how the quarter uh, explains that uh, the f during the first quarter, we growth 8.4, and during the second one, 8.78. We could say a little bit more. But in the second semester, where there is more consumption, more economic activity, perspective is 
that it's going to be better. In the same way, in regarding inflation in 2024, we can say with uh, quietly, with mental peace, we have defeated hyperinflation. And this year, we're going to have, like in the months of June and July, we have the lowest inflation in decades. The inflation in June was the lowest in 30 years. The one in July was the lowest in 39 years. And this in uh, difficult political times. Because, well, they came with uh, those sanctions. We need to work beyond those people. They can keep their sanctions. We can we keep our solutions. Because or we are free and independent economically, or we are it. We don't have any other option. Growing or not being. Our only option is be and doing and solving and building. This country belongs to everybody, not only to Maduro or Calisto or Villegas. This country is ours, of all of us, and we all have the right to growth and prosperity in life. We show the right to future for all the Venezuelan people, but of, uh, mainly children, the ones that are being born and the ones that are growing, the, the beautiful youth. For them, we're doing this, and we all need to have conscious of the commitment we have with this generation with the dreams of a country where those children can grow up and educate and have a society with peace and good values and opportunities. They wanted to steal the right to have opportunities in our land and the right to have a future. But we didn't allow it and we won't allow it. So these numbers, as we were talking this is laughing because he knows what we were talking about. These numbers are in the middle of the electoral dispute. A month ago, they tried to burn Venezuela. It was a Monday, right? I was here. At this time, they wanted to attack Miraflores. Right now, at this time, with a group of 300 criminals. Criminals who were hired. Most of the ones arrested had a, a drug in their blood and they tried to attack the Miraflores. Uh, you can go through the square and also here almost always here uh, across the street from Santa Capilla which was a larger group at this time I was here and then on Tuesday you know what happened luckily the immense majority were identified since they posted videos on TikTok. They were live on TikTok. <laughs> that Tuesday, I moved to Miraflores uh, as a symbol of democracy and peace. Being here, I showed to, I showed him my phone, bring me my phone. You can connect. Uh, you, do you have TikTok? And uh, you see TikTok. You get into TikTok in your account. Right here. Here there are. We're live. 
And then you see here the accounts. Here you see the people's account. Here is the account of Dr. Viter. Here it is. Then, instead of showing up here, Dr. Viter from from every ten accounts, there there were eight showing live violence in all of the municipalities of Venezuela, in the Oliaris Square. There were there was an account of some actor in Venezuela who lives in Miami, who was broadcasting live and putting his voice in, into the live and was describing all of that, what they wanted to do. In They were transmitting live. And then those images and the modern equipments our scientific police had, we could identify the uh, all of these people and they are facing justice right now. In the world, they are called political. They are political prisoners, but what a way to do policy, burning a hospital. And look how our economy behaved. Practically, we didn't have uh, problems. I can almost say it. We were in coordination with cultural producers and markets the municipal markets, popular markets, and practically on Thursday of that week, uh, August 1st, we could supply the whole uh, distribution system of the country. That shows how strong is our economy. And political dispute uh, cannot be moved into the battlefield. Economy is not a battlefield of ideology and parties and poli politics. Economy is in the field it must be, in a field of work, effort, production, and uh, building a future. That's a detail that the central bank has to take into account the capacity to endure moments of uh, difficulties, political difficulties. Hyperinflation has been defeated, and we have very good news of the controlling that phenomenon. In the same way, we have to say something very important. Today, we have an internal market that is very strong. If during the first semester our economy grew 8.58%, uh, the internal consumption of the country grew 8.99%. Exact uh, estimations. I asked the president of the central bank. I could say he grew 9%, and he said not. It was 8.99, the internal consumption. We learned that early, and I think that in economy, we need to educate people uh, in the matter of new economy, an internal market strong can say, it shows that there is a buying capacity in our society. And this, in spite of the difficulties we have, we need to uh, make better uh, the wages of workers. We have created a system of production and incomes and social protection that causes the millions of men and women of this country have access to uh, basic elements for consumption. We have a strong market for the capacity of buying and consume that we have established. But it's uh, stable due to the production capacity. 
we have the achieved percentage that we have never seen. We can mention a 97% of capacity with a percentage of national production and a complementary percentage of uh, imports. Do you think this is something incredible that imports now are part of the economical natural process? If I want to import phones, we don't produce cell phones here, just a little bit. Minister of what does he say? We do we produce phones? Yes, we do. This was a gift of Xi Jinping, President of China. If you want, like today in Venezuela, a friend who came from Brazil said that he went to the municipal markets. Do you remember? And he went to big malls and stores in the street and compared products and brands and quality and price. And he told me, we have, we have better products here and better prices that in the whole Brazil. And this is a man who travels the world. He told this to me eight months ago. More offers, more quality, and better prices. But now it doesn't depend on um, Caribe. That I don't even know if it's still imprisoned. Now if you have an economic activity sustained in uh, selling import products, you can get your money, import it, and sell it and recover your in investment. This should be strengthened with a process of substituting imports to strengthen our currency. And the way you produce the phone here and sell it with the same quality, those uh, dollars don't go outside. So the pressure, the pressure on um, foreign currency is less. So we have an internal market which is strong, an internal consumption that shows that we have uh, growing income in Venezuelan families. And also we have an offer of multiple quality products with competitive prices. Even in this season, president of the central bank, I've seen reappear in important store chains offers something that I haven't seen in a long time. 50% discount, 80% discount. I've never seen that in a long time. The malls, big stores, and when I was uh, traveling the whole country, you know, several cities, I saw it. You saw it. J.B. Vincent saw it also. The growing uh, shown up prices in our currency system. The economy of war we have to declare due to this crisis and the sanction. These are phenomena that we have to be aware of, good things to strengthen our currency. Because it's a lie that the way to build a new economy is just roses. No, it's not. It's creating and building on a daily basis. And the way of creating that, that new economy is talking to all of the 
people involved in economy is di uh, dialogue is uh, hearing each other and you the economical actors in this case of the financial banking sector and the social secure and the uh, and the stock mar market uh, of Caracas recreation. And you might know it, this man that is sitting here. The history placed him here. He never aspired to this position. He knows the mission he needs to achieve. You might know economical actors of this country that you count with all me support, my support to um, develop uh, Venezuela's economy. And I am aware of all of the economic tendencies. And I know that Venezuela has took the right path to build a new economy. And I am absolutely sure that in the years coming during the 2030, Venezuela is going to surprise South America and we'll do it ourselves with our own technology, our own mechanisms. We will surprise the whole world. I'll see you in 2030 and you will see. We see each other before to keep talking in the same way Delcy the whole issue of recovering investments. I must say also an important information. During the first semester, investment in the country, national and internationally, shows a growth of 16%. Practically has doubled the GDP. You who are experts could explain this better, but only with a uh, simple common sense. Uh, we have doubled our investments nationally and internationally. Um, the growth of our GDP, what shows, will trust in our economy because nobody invests in an economy that uh, will not provide earnings to them. It's an important uh, datum of uh, current uh, economic effects. The vice president brought some ideas, proposals, and actions. We need to move forward to a process of democra democratizing our capital, access to credit, and financial uh, pro uh, processes um, to create a national richness. The banking sector has growth and during the first semester. This is a good information. Has the banking sector has growth 21%. Financial health has our republic. Banking health and currency health. This is three, these are three key elements to say that if we perfect our politics and um, make bigger financial finance finances, we can build important circles of production of uh, richness in our country and keep uh, turning money translated into your earnings turn it into GDP to uh, establish a stronger economy. Venezuela has a call of new uh, world geopolitics 
But not only that, because uh, we live in a multipolar world. We have a new geo economy in the world. There's a new global economy. Today, the political powers are not where they were before. And this is a tendency that is not going back in the history of economy uh, of humanity. This is an irreversible tendency, and Venezuela is oriented from since a long, uh, in several years. But we're heading now to the BRICS, technology with the BRICS, capital with the BRICS, uh, partners the BRICS. BRICS are no longer an option because they are the future without uh, undermine uh, the other sectors. I've told to the US people that are always here, these are part, this is part of the conversations I have with uh, economic actors of the United States. I always say, United States is going to be there the whole life. Not even without, uh, with, not even with AI, we can move the United States. And no matter what happens, the United States in the upcoming years, in spite that they have a declive uh, process, it's always going to be a powerhouse. South America and Venezuela, we're going to be here. We are not going to move and end up there in Africa, India, Asia, the New World over there. We are forced to respect each other and understand each other and build ways together between, among uh, independent states and independent countries. Honey, they, they want their country to be great again. We also want our country to be great again and strong. And modestly, this country that has 30 million inhabitants has right to life, future, to growth, to happiness, to prosperity. We have right. True? That was during the 15th, 16th, 18th century, even the 20th century. Well, there was geopolitical determination. The ones who rule and the ones who obey, who rule the European empires in the 20, 21, 21st century, who rules Washington? Who said that? Where is that written? Historical determinism, the ones who rule. Why? I don't share that opinion. This man who's here, Simon Bolivar, if he, he would have um, been ignorant, we wouldn't exist. Maybe we would, have, we would have been slaves. This man uh, determined uh, an important um, an inflection point for the future, our great Simon Bolivar. So let's think of the world in a different way and assume our commitments and our responsibilities because it has been proven that another world, a better world and different can be achieved. And that new world different needs to start by consolidating our own economy, independent economy that generates wealth in our country. Mrs. Vice President, please. Thank you, President. Well, first, I want to greet our representatives of the public bank, the stock market that are joining us here today in this meeting. And we're through the National Economic Council. We 
established dialogue. In this case, you have proofs, uh, some actions, some with greater impact or uh, small impact, but um, contents with a sector. One of these has to do with a secure sector. We approved a reform, a law for social security, and it has been subscribed this ruling to vitalize the content of this law, which were uh, solicitudes of this association, banking association. And the, there's a good news with, uh, we talk about a secure sector with the banking, we can allow us to move uh, on for the benefit of Venezuelan people. And all that has to do with regulations that benefit the national security over the international security. One of the most important aspects has to do with uh, <clears throat> reserves of secures to invest in the stock market. With the stock market, we have had a lot of work because it's a, a sector where we can do a lot still as a financial mechanism so that Venezuela has a, stock, a strong stock market. Then, uh, good news is that next week, the Ministry of Economy and Finance can offer investment tools, not only in a general level, but also to the banking sector. Those instruments, those tools are going to be very well welcome. Another news has to do with uh, withdrawal of the bills the we used before and also the implementation of digital media to receive internal tribute which will allow that our banking has more connectivity in this sector then we have a good news communicated by the central bank of venezuela we have worked with a banking association which is the implementation of an interbanking uh, currency market amongst banks automatized, which will allow connection with this automatized system to participate in the exchanging market. Then sometimes we have antecedent that some banking, some banks can't sell to others, but this will allow communication and this implementation will be very well welcome. Then also we are going to um, do some uh, upgrading banking with our currency. And we definitely, as Venezuelans, want to strengthen our monetary sovereignty. Of course, look, these are real processes that you can do by decrees. You can issue a decree eliminating a foreign currency. The real economy is the real economy. And the world is moving on to a multi-monetary system. The system that is going to be part of the future is going to be multi-currency system with uh, the currencies that we already know, yuan, euro, dollars, rupias uh, of India. And the systems that are going to be created are multi-currency. And let's not talk about cryptocurrencies. We started that way, and we need to, to get it back because it was destroyed by several criminals, but we're, we're taking it back. Um, the other time, someone very close to me, two years ago, in 2022, taking a taxi, was going to pay for the taxi, and the driver said, what currency do you want to pay in? And he had cryptocurrency, dollar, euros, and Bolivar. And that person chose the currency that he wanted to pay in. And I thought this, well, this 
what happens to this person that I think the, the world of the future is going to be like that. And when that world arrives, the, the existence of national currency is not going to be denied. I throw this, show this for studying and perfect our currency system, our financial system, for strengthening our currency that would be proportional to strengthen our productive apparatus, our economy, just that simple. And it's going to be respected when we get into BRICS and we will be in the multi-currency system of the BRICS. And we had our currency supported with the truth of the country. We have a news, one for you and one for the bank. We're going to have discount and uh, legal market. And the most important news for you. President has asked for more than 300,000 financing for entrepreneurs movement. And we have asked for banking uh, support to establish this. How much time we need to establish this system uh, for entrepreneurs. Look that it's already, it's ready. This is how we respond. But I can say to entrepreneurs, all the people who dream with uh, this, entrepreneurship is the most beautiful word we have in Venezuela because entrepreneurs are the ones that generate power, richness, and wealth. They are the ones who, uh, they are like uh, the ones who move, uh, make the life better. As more entrepreneurs have the country, Venezuela will have uh, grantees of a strong market and a strong productive system. And also with something that is key because entrepreneurship comes uh, and create a product. Second, creates um, jobs. It, it, is an, it has an important management, uh, a small uh, and medium enterprises. We all talk about them these small and medium enterprises, it's important to support them. Today, the entrepreneurship phenomenon that generates products and jobs, and in case of Venezuela, generates uh, incomes bigger than the ones that the state can provide. So it's uh, a very good news. They ask some the demand that I've done to the private banking adds uh, three three hundred thousand uh, do dollars for uh, entrepreneurs. More uh, a million that we're going to provide. This, there is this system that you want to grant it. Let's make it work. Today, with technology, it's easier. But I put my work, my body, and my being uh, for entrepreneurs, which are the, the ones who pay the best. And amongst entrepreneurs, you cannot find someone who doesn't pay. The lowest paying time uh, doesn't reach 1%. So money, the best invested, uh, is with um, entrepreneurs of the country. This is a beautiful encounter. Let's continue dialoguing and under, with uh, understanding. August. 
is ending. September is coming, October and November and December. True. Christmas is coming. It smells like Christmas. Well, we will have good news for Christmas. From now, I wish you success and that 2024 economical year ends out very well. We listen to the President of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, and the Vice President of the Republic, Delcy Rodriguez, in this important work meeting with representatives of the National Bank of the Stock Market and Secures. So the head of state said.